OK, very good morning. Welcome to the football show. Let's start uh, with some big breaking news this Monday morning. And we have just heard in the last couple of seconds that uh, Southampton have parted company with Ralph Harsenhutl. Uh, he has left the club uh, with immediate effect. Um, the story had been uh, brewing for quite some time, uh, but it has just been confirmed in the past couple of moments that Ralph Harsenhutl has left Southampton. Uh, obviously, that disappointing defeat uh, against Newcastle yesterday uh, and uh, Southampton reacting in the last couple of moments. Uh, they were beaten 4-1 at home uh, by Newcastle, weren't they, yesterday? And uh, his time uh, on the south coast with Southampton is at an end. Uh, Sue Smith, uh, Stephen Warnock with me uh, this morning. Let's get your immediate reaction to that. Stephen, let's come to you first of all. Uh, I think, to be honest with you, I think there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of weeks about the potential of him leaving. Would it be before the World Cup or would it be just, um, just after the, the end of the, the season uh, or the break in the season to go to the World Cup? I think it's, it's a, an important time to do it because it gives a new manager the opportunity to come in, work with players who aren't going to be at the World Cup, uh, assess the ones that are see what he needs to, to achieve and, and get the balance right within the squad. I think the, the big thing for me was a lot of the signings that were made in the summer was almost, they were preparing themselves for the next two years of football and it was always going to be a difficult season this year with youngsters coming in and trying to gain experience within the Premier League, which is always difficult to do. Um, but you, you're judged on results at the end of the day and you're judged on, on where, you, where you sit and, and how you're playing. And I think there's, there's not really been strides made over the, over the last, well, certainly towards the latter end of last season and the start of this season. 18th in the Premier League. I mean, there's always a straw uh, that breaks the camel's back, wasn't it? But was it that 4-1 defeat to Newcastle yesterday? There's, and actually, the way Newcastle are playing, there's, there's no disgrace in that, is there? Yeah, I think it's certainly been coming. I don't think it's a surprise to, to anyone, in particular the, the Southampton fans. I think that in terms of the results, um, like Stephen said, you, you look at some of the performances, even yesterday against Newcastle watching the game, Newcastle went 1-0 up, but then Southampton had opportunities opportunities to, to equalise. They then, Newcastle then went 2-0, 3-0 and it was sort of game over then and, and I think that's sometimes what you will get with a, a young side, the, the inconsistencies but I think looking at, at Southampton as a whole, it was like Ralph Halson who didn't really know his best 11, his best system, he was sort of chopping and changing and I think fans were looking at it thinking, you know, what what is he going to do today and, and tactically what is he going to do and, and at times maybe got that wrong and, and maybe that's yeah. why inevitably you know he's he's lost his job but at, like I say watching the game yesterday you thought well they've got opportunities but that's happened in, in a lot of games that I've watched with Southampton they've had those chances to to score to equalize to get themselves back in the game and they just haven't haven't been able to do it. OK, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the part of, of Ralph Harsenhutl here then and <laughs> you, you swap them back to okay. me because I'm looking at the games against Leicester when he made two inspired substitutions yeah. and, and Southampton came back. There was a game against Chelsea. It seemed when he needed a result, and I'm thinking of mm. Bournemouth away as well, that he could pluck those out. Yeah, the, the two games that you've just mentioned there though, Rob, you, you're looking at Leicester who had a terrible start to the season themselves, so it was probably a good time to play against Leicester when confidence was low. Chelsea, again, in change in, in sort of the position that they're in at the moment. Confidence is low, so if you are going to go against two team, teams and make changes and try and have an effect on it, it's teams that are against who, who are suffering in confidence. So there's different ways of looking at it, I suppose. I, I suppose you, you do look at it in a positive way and say, yes, he is capable of making changes. I think the big thing for, for me, and I don't know how you feel, Sue, but... I think we could have sat here numerous weeks and said, Hassan Hüttel's been sacked. Yeah. I, I, I do, that's why it doesn't come as a surprise. I think you obviously look back to those 9-0 those defeats and there was a couple of So a what's the difference those. this time? Um, well, progression, isn't it? And where the, where the team are at. I think if you look at when, when, when they suffered 9-0 defeats last time, they'd had good runs before it and they were higher up at the table. Now you're in the bottom three positions. Are they looking at it thinking, is he the right man now to improve the youngsters coming into the squad and give them that, that guidance that they need? They obviously feel it's n he's not the right man to do that and they feel that there's someone else better suited to that. 
Yeah, and you've got to say, he's done a really good job over the period of time that, that he yeah. has been there. And I just think maybe now is the, the time to change things because of, you know, this World Cup period that, that we're going to have. The new manager coming in will have time to, to work with his team to decide what style they want to play and instill that style onto this, this young group of players. Because I think you're looking at some of the players and, and they are underperforming. They're probably not performing at the levels we expect them to perform at. I think you can look at, you mentioned it, losing experienced players, Romero going out, an experienced player in the dressing room is going to have an impact, isn't yeah. it? I, th I think the other interesting part is, is that this is, this is like, like a season like no other, is it? With yeah. the World Cup being in the middle. From an owner's point of view, it's a blessing where they go, if, if you are struggling and you're in the bottom three and you need to make a change, you've almost got a, a, a three-week, four-week period where a new manager comes in and it's effectively like a pre-season. OK, they'll miss certain players because of the World Cup, but the majority of Southampton's squad won't be going to the World Cup. A World Cup. The, the, there'll be a large chunk of players that are staying at home that they, the new manager can come in and work with. That's unprecedented. That's, that's not unheard of in, in, in the Premier League. So it's, it's a big opportunity. And I just wonder if there wasn't a World Cup, would they have made this change? Or would they have thought, do you know what, it's going to be such a difficult task to come into the Premier League uh, and achieve that? The big thing now is, is do they go for an, an experienced manager who's been in the Premier League, who understands it and, and knows how to, to survive? Mm. Yeah, I was talking to those players. We won't know until Thursday, obviously, but you get the sense that James Ward-Prowse most probably will not be in there, who, who has featured amongst England squads. Is it because he's not getting a tune out of those top players? Oriol Romeo leaving in the summer as yeah. well as also a, a big loss, not just on the field, but in the dressing room as well. Yeah, I think so. I think when you lose an experienced player like that, yes, it's going to have an impact on the field, but it is off the field when things aren't quite going right. You look to those experienced players for, for guidance. But yeah, James Ward-Prowse hasn't been at the levels we know that James Ward-Prowse can, can be at. Yes, he showed the glimpses of quality that, that we know he can play in, but sometimes it is about you know, the right system or the manager getting the best out of, of the player himself. And, and he actually said yesterday, I listened to his interview after the game and, and he was standing by Ralph Hasenhutl and he was saying, I actually think we did okay today. And I think we had opportunities and we could have got ourselves back into the game, but at those big moments, we didn't take those chances. So, um, you know, he was still clearly, you know, standing by the, the manager, but I just think it, it was a timing thing. It was maybe a bit of panic that, they're not doing well, they're not seeing the progression and the development of the players and now is an opportunity to make the change and hopefully when they come back from the, the World Cup break, they can then start seeing that, that yeah. development and they start progressing up the league. Yeah. OK, so they, they've, they've made this decision now. I'm, I'm thinking back to when Ralph Hasenhutl came in. Um, a few weeks later, back in Dece December 2018, so it was a bit later... Uh, in the season, and they were in big trouble then, yeah. weren't they? Mm. Uh, is, is, the, is whoever inherits this squad taking over a, a side and a team who are in more perilous position, or did Ralph Hasen Hoodle, in fact, then work miracles to keep them up? It's a, it's a great question because you, you look at the situation and you think one thing that Southampton desperately need is goals. Yeah. They need a striker. They need someone to come in and, and, and be able to lift them and give them that opportunity to, to carry out the, the relegation places. Um, I think the squad's not bad, but I'm talking potential. Mm. And, and that's the big thing is it's OK having potential. But you, you've got to know where it's, what its capability is and where it can get to. And I think when you look at the Southampton squad, you mentioned it there, James Ward-Prowse, and you, I'm sure there was times where he's looking around the pitch thinking, I wish I had more senior figures around me to help me through the games. Not, not from an individual point of view, but to, to pass on information and things like that. I think whoever comes into the job will want reassurances that they've got a, a, a pot of money to spend to bring a striker in to get goals to get them out of the division because that is effectively what will oh sorry keep them in the division that is what they'll need um, it, it, I think it'll be fascinating to see who comes into this job because in my head I'm thinking there won't be a pot of money mm. I don't see Southampton as this club who's going to go there's 40 50 million keepers within the Premier League. Yeah, I do think that there's been a lot of pressure on James Ward-Prowse going back to that because he is that senior figure, he is that that player that you look to, to to just make something happen, whether that's a free kick, whether that's, you know, in play, the, the cross, the delivery. And 
it, it was you could see that maybe that was not not bringing him down a little bit but you could see that he was really trying to get the pressure. team going it is an added pressure and like you say he probably just needed other or more senior players in and around him but there certainly was at the start of, of the season where they were saying that they were going to bring another striker in and, and that didn't happen and, and mm. that's exactly what they need because they desperately need more goals in the side. OK, well, we're going to pick up on this because it, it seemed that the writing was on the wall really um, after that result yesterday. This is what Harsen Hoodle had to say after defeat to Newcastle in what we now know was his last game in charge. I have to ask, do you feel that is your final game in charge of Southampton? Today? Yes. I, I, do you know, I have taken a lot of decisions since I'm here. The good thing is, this one I don't have to take. Can you see a way out of this slump? Hmm? Can you see a way out of this slump? Uh, no. <laughs> In the moment, not, because um, I cannot say that we, we don't try a lot. Uh, till the last minute we tried and we were putting a lot of effort on the pitch. Everybody cannot say that the uh, team is not fighting for it. but. Uh, in the moment, we are not taking the reward for, for the effort we are putting on the pitch. His body language, the tone of his voice, and I guess most critically, his answer there. Can you see a way out of this slump? No. Yeah. You, you get the sense that he knew at that stage. I think so. Uh, and like I say, there's been rumours for a while now, hasn't there? And, and you could see, I think by, by looking at, at that, interview you could see like say the shoulders were slumped the, the answers that, that he come up with whether you know he's had that discussion and said I, yeah. I don't know if I can take this team any further um you know he's he's run out of ideas and you could see by the way that he was chopping and changing that he was trying new things and trying to to come up with answers playing different players in different positions and he has had injuries losing sort of key players as well but I just feel the next manager that comes in you would say probably needs experience in the Premier League, needs experience in developing young players and, and progressing them to the levels that, that they need to, to be at because that's the next step, I think, now for, for Southampton. Um, if we look at the fixtures, uh, EFL Cup, Sheffield Wednesday, then Liverpool um, before the break. But when the Premier League resumes, Brighton, Fulham, Nottingham Forest, Everton, Aston Villa, Brentford, Wolves is their run of game. That, that's why the change has been made. Mm. So, the change will be made. Who comes in? I, I would think Southampton fans at the moment, fingers, toes, everything crossed. Maurizio Pochettino, come back, <laughs> come back to us, please. Yeah. But realistic, well, maybe that is realistic. Who, who could you see filling that position? I think it's it's such a difficult one to call this because when, when we've looked at the managers that Southampton have appointed in the past and you think of Pochettino and you think of Hassan Hootl, they haven't gone down the conventional route of what everyone thinks they're going to do. They've looked and thought outside the box, if you like, and they've looked for progressive coaches, up-and-coming coaches. Um, and I think when you when you think about Premier League experience and you, you look outside at the moment and you, you straight away, you look at Sean Dyche and you say, would he fit the remit of, of, of Southampton and would it work? I'm not so sure it would. And, and the reason I say that is because of the players that are there, the young players. I think if you look at Sean Dice, he likes experienced players. He likes them to know what the jobs are and what that, what that entails. Um, but he's certainly one that would be interested in the job, I'm sure. But whether Southampton go down that route, I'm, I, I'm not so sure they will. I think they'll probably appoint foreign again. Is it, is it fair to say, Sue, if we look at the history of Southampton, that any manager, and you were talking about, is there a pot of gold for a, for a centre forward? Southampton traditionally have managed to pull up rabbits out of the hat yeah. because they've then gone and sold their players on, haven't they? So uh, do you have to, does any manager coming into Southampton have to accept that policy or do Southampton as a club change their policy? Well, I, I think that's what the manager will have to have that discussion and, and sort of say, well, I'm looking at this side and I'm looking at what they need to do and what they need to do is they need to score more goals prime example yesterday the game against Newcastle where they're creating an opportunity clear cut opportunities and they're not putting the ball in the back of the net and there's so many games you could go yeah. back and, and say that so you'd come in as a manager and you'd say well that's what we need we need a new centre forward but we know that the way that Southampton do it like you say they you know they're so good in in the recruitment and bringing in the players that maybe we haven't heard of they come into the Premier League and, and they do a good job and they're able to stay in the Premier League and so 
yeah, it, it's what route do they go down? Is it the experienced manager that, that knows the Premier League, that knows how to, first and foremost, stay up, secondly, to then develop the players, or do they go abroad yeah. and bring in a, a, new, a new manager, a new way? I think what's interesting is now, it, it, if someone comes along and you've got an opportunity to manage in the Premier League, are you going to turn that down because you aren't going to get enough money? Yeah. Or is it the opportunity where you just go, I want to, I want to manage in the Premier League again, or I want to try, try in the Premier League and come in to be a manager in there? And it's too good an opportunity for someone to turn down because, let's not forget, it's not, not everyone gets the opportunity to manage in the Premier League, and it is an ambition of most managers to, to test themselves against the top managers. We're very fortunate that we have the top managers in world football within the Premier League and they'll want to test themselves against those. The, the position that Southampton are in as well, with a young squad, there's nothing to lose yeah. for that manager coming in. They're in the bottom three already. The damage is effectively could have already been done within the squad. That's how you could sort of spin it if, you, if, you, if it really comes to that. If you keep them up, your stock, raise, uh, your stock goes up again or, or continues to go up depending on who comes in. I think it, it's, it's a no-brainer to take that job. You don't look at that job and go, they're definitely not staying up. There's potential within yeah, the squad. There is. So you've got to take that job and give it a go. And sometimes as a player, a new manager comes in, it's just a new voice, isn't it? A new way of doing things. Yeah. And suddenly it sort of raises the atmosphere around training. It raises the, the dressing room and, and those performances then are good on the pitch. Um, we have a, a statement in from Southampton. It says first team assistant coach Richard Kitzbichler has uh, also left the club. Um, they go on to say that Ralph Halsenhudel, who was appointed December 2018, despite, departs having made a significant contribution to the club, overseeing some memorable results and also playing a key role in the development of our club infrastructure, identity and playing squad. However, the statement says, we now believe it's an appropriate time to make a change. Everyone involved with the club would like to express their sincere thanks to Ralph all his efforts, as well as the unwavering commitment he's shown throughout his time as manager. First team lead coach Ruben Celes will take charge of the side on an interim basis for our game on Wednesday night. The club will be announcing a permanent replacement in due course.